So with the recent creation of the absolutely adorable Woolly Mouse, we are now one step closer to cloning the Woolly Mammoth. But is this really a good idea? You see, it's a lot more complicated than people let on, as there are many pros and cons when it comes to the idea of cloning the woolly mammoth, which people simply aren't talking about. So let's finally discuss the truth about the good and bad that goes behind cloning these incredibly unique and majestic prehistoric creatures. But first, we gotta discuss why people would want to bring back the woolly mammoth in the first place, and the problems that come with this concept. So first, we gotta address the elephant in the room. Why do we want to bring back woolly mammoths in the first place, and why are so many scientists on board? Well, for starters, it's pretty cool. But also, mammoths were a keystone species back when they were around, as they helped in creating the ecosystem that was once known as the Mammoth Steppe which was essentially a sub-arctic grassland which would have stretched all across Russia and in the northern half of North America. Prior to the extinction of the mammoth, these grasslands were once home to all sorts of incredibly unique creatures, ranging from modern-day bison and yak to all sorts of unique prehistoric fauna, such as the Smilodon and the Lasmotherium. Yet, we only want to bring back the mammoth and not these other creatures for a few reasons. The main one being the fact that unlike those other creatures previously mentioned, the mammoths are experts at shaping their ecosystems. In other words, these creatures were ecosystem engineers, very similar to modern day elephants, as they would knock down forest, making more room for subarctic grasslands. And why do we want more subarctic grasslands? Because they happen to hold more CO2 than tundra forest, as permafrost tends to compact all sorts of greenhouse gases, keeping it locked away in the ground and out of our atmosphere, which in a way actually does help keep the earth cool. As regardless of what you believe, climate change is a big problem and we're gonna need all the help we could get in the upcoming years. Still, the impacts these creatures will likely have on climate change is probably gonna be very minimal, especially compared to the likely side effects that will occur by having reintroduced these mammoths back into the ecosystem. As even though they've only gone extinct as recently as 4,000 years ago in some areas, they are still essentially gonna be a whole new species towards the other animals that exist in their current habitat. And over time, as more mammoths are introduced, there's a chance they might end up starting to compete with native muskox and bison for habitat and food. And what's of even more concern is the fact that there aren't really any predators left that could truly take down a mammoth. Sure, Siberian tigers in some parts of Russia might be able to stand somewhat of a chance against a juvenile mammoth, but really there's no animal that's going to be able to take out an adult. Thankfully though, elephants reproduce incredibly slowly, making this only a mild concern in the many problems that come with bringing these mammoths back to life. But unfortunately, this concern is far from the only problem when it comes to bringing these incredibly unique creatures back to life, with another main concern being the fact that these aren't exactly going to be pure-blooded mammoths. If you don't know how the cloning of extinct animals currently works, it's very complicated, but let's just say these aren't exactly going to be pure replicas of the mammoths of the past. Instead, they're actually going to be animals based off of our current closest relative of the woolly mammoth, that being the Asian elephant, as we're going to use the base genome of the Asian elephant and modify it using mammoth genes to create a very similar replica to what would have been the woolly mammoth. After all, the whole reason why these adorable woolly mice exist is because we needed to make sure that these mice would have been able to inherit some of the genes from the mammoths, specifically their fur and fat reserves, which would allow for these elephants, which would eventually become these quote-unquote mammoths, to be able to survive in the Siberian tundra. And also, of course, we want this mammoth to actually look like a mammoth. So we decided to test these genes out on mice first, as it's been done plenty of times before with other animals, and for better or worse, gene research will continue to be done done on these mice in the future. Though this also leads into our next problem for why cloning these woolly mammoths might not actually be such a good idea. As stated before, the base genome of these woolly mammoths will come from the Asian elephant. This means the woolly mammoth will actually need an Asian elephant mother in order to be created. And this comes with many, many problems. The main one being the fact that Asian elephants aren't exactly known for being experimented on due to their large size, highly intelligent social behavior, and the fact that 
that they are endangered throughout most of their range in the wild, meaning that they aren't exactly common in labs, especially not for gene modification. So even the process of simply getting an Asian elephant in the first place to actually act as a mother for a future woolly mammoth would be incredibly hard to do for a combination of different reasons, ranging from legal issues to simple care issues, as the Asian elephant will likely need a very different lifestyle than its eventual child, the quote unquote woolly mammoth. This might unfortunately mean that the woolly mammoth will have to be separated from its mother, and this could lead to a lot of social issues as it continues to grow up. As as far as we know, the woolly mammoth was a social species, just like all other proboscineans that are alive today. So this would likely mean that our first woolly mammoth wouldn't exactly be in the best of care. And also, you have to consider what would these woolly mammoths even eat, as so far we don't actually know if we could modify the Asian elephant's digestive tract to be able to process the tundra flora needed in order to survive. As the plants these woolly mammoths will be consuming in the subarctic is going to be very different than the tropical flora that the Asian elephants are currently consuming out in the wild. With this being of particular concern, because the Asian elephants have evolved for over millions of years specifically to live in tropical forest, which is very different than the mammoths which have evolved specifically to eat the plants of the subarctic. You also have to keep in mind that even if this process is successful, we don't even know for sure if these hybrid mammoths will be able to breed. As while it's certainly not always the case, normally hybrids of different animal species aren't fertile or at the very least have reduced fertility. So this leads to the problem of how many Asian elephant mothers are we even going to need in order to create an actual successful population, especially if a lot of them are going to end up being sterile. There's a very good chance that in order to actually make a successful mammoth population, we might need hundreds of Asian elephant mothers producing woolly mammoth babies in order to successfully make this work. And this comes with a lot of different problems, ranging from how much it will cost to actually take care of all of these elephants and actually actually successfully clone the woolly mammoth over and over again, and of the fact that as stated before, these elephants are endangered. And this only further leads into the next ethical issue. That being if we should actually focus all our time and money and attention on bringing back the woolly mammoth in the first place, or if we should instead continue to try to support the Asian elephants in bringing them back into the wild and reintroducing them to more parts of their range in which they went extinct in. With so much money going into cloning the woolly mammoth, imagine what sort of amazing conservation efforts we could do if we had this amount of money going into the modern day Asian elephant. And since this project might actually require hundreds of different Asian elephant mothers, there's a very good chance that this project isn't going to help the Asian elephant population as a whole, to say the least. As this is time and energy that could be spent on producing more Asian elephant babies instead. After all, is it really worth putting this much time and effort into cloning the woolly mammoth when we haven't even cloned a single extinct mammal species successfully so far? The closest thing we have had to a success in cloning an extinct species was the Pyerian ibex, which was cloned back in 2003 shortly after its extinction, though it died shortly after birth due to an unknown defect. So with a lack of reference, this still leaves a lot of unknowns when it comes to cloning any extinct species, let alone a creature that's been extinct for about 4,000 years and has many unknowns that come with it. And don't get me wrong, I'd love to see these incredibly large and impressive impressive creatures roaming the tundra and recreating the mammoth steppe in the wild once again, just as they did thousands of years ago back when the earth was more pristine and untouched. But you just have to keep in mind that not every fantastical concept and incredible idea is always practical, and sometimes we have to ask the hard questions in order to decide if such ideas are practical or will even work in the first place. These questions are only further exacerbated by Colossal Bioscience's other alleged cloning projects, those being the ones currently done on the thylacine and the dodo. In the case of the dodo, not a single bird has ever been successfully cloned, let alone an extinct species of bird. This is because in order to clone an animal, you need to modify it very early on in its development. And while this is pretty easy to do with mammals in the uterus, this process is incredibly hard to do with birds which develop in the yolk while in a hard-shelled egg. 
and it only takes a little bit of disruption in order to end up killing the bird during its development while in the egg. So for this reason, not a single bird has been successfully cloned. And outside of its marketability, there isn't that much of a reason to clone the dodo in the first place beyond it just being cool. While they do aid in seed dispersal, there are plenty of other recently extinct species of birds that would likely be of much greater impact in helping the environment if they were to be brought back, such as the ivory-billed woodpecker, Carolina a parakeet, or even the moas of New Zealand and the elephant birds of Madagascar. For as much as I love dodos, I think all of these species would be even cooler and also likely of much greater help towards the environment if we were to somehow find a way to successfully bring extinct birds back. The thylacine, on the other hand, is a much better candidate, in my opinion, than both the woolly mammoth and the dodo bird for an extinct species in which we should be trying to bring back. But there's still its own unique set of problems when it comes to bringing back this incredible animal. The main one being that its closest relative, the quals, diverged in its evolutionary path about 15 million years ago from the thylacine, meaning that the thylacine has no current close relatives in the modern era. And without a close relative to act as the base genome and eventual parent of the clone thylacine, this makes the idea of actually cloning one near impossible. So in a lot of ways, successfully cloning this species could be considered just as impractical as the dodo. That is assuming the thylacine is actually extinct in the first place, which is a whole nother controversial subject for another video. In an ironic twist of fate, the woolly mammoth seems to be the most practical of these three species that are possibly going to be cloned by colossal biosciences in the near future. But if this will actually happen remains to be seen. But for now, what matters, I think, isn't that we focus on bringing back these incredibly unique creatures, but instead focus on the creatures we currently have right now that are endangered. We are spending millions of dollars in order to bring back the woolly mammoth, thylacine, and dodo, yet we aren't spending nearly enough in order to ensure a lot of the world's current amazing and incredibly unique species stay alive. And don't get me wrong, I'd love to see a real-life Jurassic Park someday just as much as the next guy, but sometimes you just have to ask yourself if this is really the right option. And honestly, I think it would just be better if we decided to choose to conserve the current animals we have left, or at the very least try cloning more practical species than the three mentioned. But if you disagree with me, we could discuss it more down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe so I could continue to make more videos in the near future. Goodbye.